Hello, yeah. Hello, Ignatius. This is Zach Franklin and Elizabeth Piscali coming live from Cornelly Field for the St. Ignatius versus Loyola football game. Sorry for getting here late, but the Ignatius football scored on the opening kickoff and made the field goal afterwards. How do you think that bodes for the rest of the game so far, Elizabeth? I think that sets up a pretty good start. Ignatius right now has the field, but there's always a comeback for Loyola. Do you think that Loyola will have an easy time coming back, or do you think they're going to have to fight yard, yard for yard? I mean, I think since this is pretty much, you know, the opening couple of minutes, mm -hmm. Loyola has a good shot, but it's up to anyone's view right now. All right, that was a squib kick from Inigo Kern, and it's brought back to the 30 yard line by Loyola. Let's see what kind of offense Loyola starts off with this game. Alright, Loyola comes out with three wide receivers and one running back. Referees are having some issues deciding where the ball goes. And they just realized it was actually Ignatius' ball that they had out there. Looks like they figured it out. Alright, and Lolo snaps the ball. It's a running play to number eight. Number eight, Trevor Cabigan. Caban. 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 All right, he got a gain of one yard. This brings up second down. Loyola comes out with four wide, three on the left side. It's another hand. It's a play action pass, and there's a Caught pass on the 40 yard line by 88. Matty Mangan. Matthew Mangan. Matthew Mangan. Good catch by him. Put up one side and then there's the other. Alright, Loyola's been picking up some steam real quick. And now they have an, uh, a near empty set. It's a keep by the quarterback. He's stuffed on the line by number nine, Giorgio Arquilla. It's fourth down, and Loyola seems to be bringing about special teams to punt off the ball back to Ignatius. Ignatius does not. Oh, Ignatius does not have anyone in back there to return. This is an interesting play call from Ignatius not having a man back to return a punt. <laughs> what do you think? Genius or idiot to not have someone uh, back there to return the punt? Yeah. It looks like Loyola stopped the ball within the five-yard line, so that way it means Ignatius has to fight the rest of the way to the other end zone, which is 95 to 98 yards. It's going to be a tough drive for them. What do you think? I agree. I don't think they can recover from that. Do you think the Ignatius is going to come out with a short run play to get a little breathing room? Or do you think they're going to try to catch Loyola off with some surprise and go for a play pass play? I think for sure they're going to go with the second option. A pass play? Yes. Yeah. Try to catch Loyola by surprise. It might work. And it's Ignatius is running it up the middle. It was a solid gain of one, two yards. Mm -hmm. 
Good for four yards, brings up second and six. And five yard line. All right. Here comes second down. Loyola seems to be in a formation that is very dedicated to the run. Not a lot of emphasis put on defending the wide receivers. That's another run play up the gut. Uh, Loyola looks to have stopped us after a gain of two yards. All right, this brings up third down. It's a crucial down. Ignatius looks like they tried to catch Loyola off sides, but they didn't get him. So it looks like they're going for a new play. What do you think they're going to run? Do you think they're going to check down? Looks like Ignatius took a timeout. So do you think Ignatius is going to come out on another third, on a four, third run play? Or do you think they're going to come out for the first fast play of the game? Um, the first. Run play? Yeah. All right. We'll see what the Wolfpack does this time. Hopefully it's not another gut run. So that might be becoming a little predictable. Yeah, hopefully they uh, move further down the field and look for. Maybe they will gain some more yardage. Yeah, better than two, right? Better than two. Ignatius is taking the field again. Looks like we're going with a two wide out set with uh, our classic eye formation besides that. All right, Ignatius is lining it up to go for third down. Ignatius snaps the ball. It's a pitch play to the outside. They got the first down. Out at the 30 yard which is definitely putting uh, them on the offensive. Yeah. It's like they're setting up their play again. It's another two wide out set with one man in the backfield and the quarterback under center. It's another gut run play with gain of no yards. Two out the middle, team of one. All right, Ignatius lining back up. We're back in our normal set. Two wide outs, one running back, and two, uh, two other running backs behind the tackles. Quarterback snaps the ball. It's another pitch play. It's a gain of about a yard. Six and Casey on the outside. I don't know. It looks like they're in the same no game. kind Brings of position. Up. You think they're going to advance? Third and a long eight. It's second, or third. it should be third down and a long. So. They definitely should go for a pass play, but Ignatius typically goes for run plays on these types of downs. So we will see if they uh, go for another pitch play that worked so well last time. Or they'll throw a flag, which will get us the automatic first down, hopefully. Ignatius comes back onto the field. Oh, sorry, the man, the man, you're you're the yes. Okay, great, thank you. Put it on silent. Thank you. All right. Ignatius is lining up one more time. It looks to be another. It's a pass play, a short pass, almost like a screen pass. It's a gain of three yards, it looks like, on there. 
Nice quick short pass from Ignatius. It's definitely uh, confusing Loyal a little bit. It's a change of pace and tempo. Do you think that that will be enough to get the first down for Ignatius? All right. All right, Ignatius lines up again. They go for the pitch play outside. Jet sweep. It's fourth down, but we're still short by a couple yards. Looks to be three yards. It's a nice stop by Loyola. Looks like we're going to punt the ball. Let's see if Loyola sends out a return man for instead of a, what we did. Yeah, it was 70 all day. Uh, it was it's been 70 degrees the last two weeks. Can't really complain about that. A big punch from Inigo Curran, and so that's a fair catch from number five on Loyola. That was a nice call from him. Ignatius was definitely swarming him by the time he got the ball. That was also a very good punt from Inigo. He was on, he was punting from his own 30 yard line, so he's back on his 15 yard line when he kicked the ball. So that was a pretty solid boot to the 50 yard line. All right, Ignatius is back. They've got two safeties deep, and it's uh, four wide receivers, three on the left. Quick pass. Ignatius tackles them for a gain of, after a gain of six yards. That was number eight on the tackle, Ben Perez, and number 18 on Loyola caught the ball. It's a pretty good catch from Rory. Do you think we'll have a big game this year, or tonight? If Loyola has a big game? If Rory has a big game. You know, I think if he keeps up what he's doing, it might be one of his best. Quarterback from Loyola looks to be uh, calm and audible. Must not like what he saw. Another pass play from Loyola. He steps up into the pocket and gets sacked for a loss of two yards. Jake that was Jake on Miles the on the sack against number 17. Matthew Schultz. All right. Let's see if Matthew can shake that off and get back into the game for a big game for a big first down. It's pushing up third down right now. All right, with four minutes and 30 seconds left in this quarter, Loyola has two, has four wideouts, two per side. He's audible in again. He must not like what he's seeing again. Maybe Ignatius is bringing more, more uh, rushers that got him last time. It's an option pitch play uh, for the first down, or just short of the first down. That's number 24 on the carry for a three-yard gain. A pretty good run from Tyler. I agree. He definitely wasn't, he didn't seem to be expecting the pitch uh, from the quarterback so soon. Uh, it looks like one of the That's Ignatius right. linemen got off the edge really quickly. Quick move from Ignatius. That's good to see. All right, Ignatius coming back on him. All right, Loyola is back. They've got two wide outs, one man in the backfield. It's a handoff up the middle. That's number 24 for a gain of one yard. We'll see if he got it. The referees have yet to mark it. They give him the first down. It's a new set of downs for Loyola. That was a really good run from Tyler Flores again. Very quick game for the for the Ramblers. Yeah, let's see if they can. Nice. Yeah, let's see if they can keep up the tempo and get uh, and score. Hopefully not though. <laughs> Another run play for Flores. That's the beginning of two. 
and he stopped two oh, yards later. Good. It's a big pile from the Wolf Pack and the Ramblers trying to push him. It's a good play by Patrick Melito with that stop. It's a good thing he held him up long enough for the rest of his team to get there. All right, Loyal has four wide receivers out. Spread out two and two with one running back again. Seems to be their default um, setup with two wide receivers. It's another run up the middle by Flores. And he's tackled after a gain of five yards. It's a pretty good run. He's had several good runs right up the middle. Ignatius must not be covering uh, the mid middle of the line pretty well. What do you think? They're afraid of a big run on the outside, it looks like. Quarterback kept it. Number nine from Ignatius. That is Giorgio Arquillo with the tackle. This is a pretty interesting tackle. Both the, uh, both the quarterback, from Loyola and Giorgio, both dove at each other. And he uh, impressed him down. another run play by 24 but he's luckily stopped by number 51 by Ignatius that is Jackson Kyle good play by him yeah he got off the edge really quickly and exploded into the backfield Flores never knew what hit him all right Loyola has four wide receivers three on Triple right. It's the pass play to so Flores. He bobbles it, but catches it. Spins out one player, and then is, and then goes down after a gain of one yard. Is now third in what looks like to be 11. Let's see if uh, the Ramblers can convert on this long third. Do you think they're going to go for a long pass, or do you think they're going to go for hopefully a big run up the middle by Flores? All right, it's a pass play. Number five caught it from Loyola. Nice catch by him. I don't know if he necessarily converted. Oh, he he did. He converted. It was a nice play by him. Got exactly the 11 yards he needed. Oh yeah, the quarterback's very deep, big, uh, deep aerial threat for us. Ignatius typically runs a run running heavy offense. So it'll be interesting to see how Ignatius will cope with uh, someone who passes as much as Loyola does. Another pass play. Wide open on the edge. Gain of five yards. And number 19, that was a good catch by him. Rory, Rory again. He's having the game of his life right now. Apparently he's having the game of his week every week. <laughs> Sounds like a casual day for him. Referees stopped the play. Let's see why. Timeout from Ignatius. That is their second timeout used. So Elizabeth, has there been anything interesting going on this um, year so far at school? It was very colorful that night. It was. Same with the game uh, at, at Fornelli Field. Over big on the student. Oh, it was a very big turnout on the student section. We had dry paint, and all the students wore white and were covered in the dry paint, so everyone looked like they just got done with the color run. It was really <laughs> interesting to see. Yeah, it was a very fun, fun game. Let's see if uh, that game can go the same way that this one's going to go. Ignatius won that last one by a pretty large margin. Yeah, the turnout's not as big as the um, homecoming game, though. It's no, crowd. it's still pretty sizable, though. Uh, it looks like there are a lot of uh, what look to be freshmen standing over by the gate. They're not in the stands, but they're right next to it. Looks like they have a lot of school pride. You can see it uh, if you're looking at the screen right in the background behind the players. <laughs> that looks to be our entire freshman class. It's a pretty good turnout for them. 
Loyola looks to have brought out an entirely new team. They still have Flores in the backfield, number 17 at quarterback. It's a handoff to Flores. Oh, it's a keeper by number 17. He broke three tackles and that was double teamed to the ground. Good play by Matthew Schultz. That was a good gain of three yards. All right, that's the first end of the first half. So, uh, good start by Ignatius with a nice uh, touchdown on the opening kickoff. But let's see if they can keep up that tempo through the rest of the game. What do you think, Elizabeth? Do you think they'll be able to do it? I think they will. I mean, they're doing, they're pretty confident now, pretty coming up strong. So if they keep up with that, I think it'll be a good game. Yeah, I think so too. All right. As the team switch sides, uh, Loyola, who are you taking? All right, so, all right, we have a short guest right here. We have a short guest with us right now. Hi, uh, Adam. my name is Adam, I'm the cameraman. Uh, as you can see right now, the camera's not moving. That's because I am here speaking to you. Uh, so as you can see, so far within the game. So Adam, what do you think Ignatius' keys to the game are to win? Uh, you see, Loyola has a very good defense, and all we keep doing is trying to get runs, but really all we need is a good PA pass or a long one, just to really get them all out there. Because so far, we've been trying to run and get through their very game, but so far we can't. Yeah, definitely. They're, uh, it's looking a little close right now. The game seems to be starting up again right now. Let's see if, it can, if the Wolfpack can keep up that tempo throughout the rest of the game. All right. Let's see how the Wolfpack keeps going. That's a pass play from Loyola. That is a touchdown. That is a touchdown for Loyola. It's their first of the game. Who would have thought it's just a change of the field? Both teams have scored on that side. Maybe it's the favorite for the game. Wind might be blowing in a favorable direction. What do you think? I agree. I mean, it's some good work coming from both sides of the team. Yeah, Loyola is definitely... Uh, doing it a little bit better with their pass plays right now. The competition is sure high right now. Oh, definitely. It's always a big game, being the Jesuit Cup and all. It's a very fierce rivalry. So we'll see how both teams stay out. That was almost blocked by number 12, uh, Aiden Lee Met. A very close one. He almost had it. Loyola does make that kick, and that brings and that makes the score 7-7. So it's a uh, tie ball game. All right, Loyal is set to kick off to the Wolfpack very shortly. After that, uh, do you, after how easily Loyola marched down the field, do you think the tides are changing and Ignatius is losing its footing, or do you think Ignatius is letting no. them have a little, gain a little confidence to keep a good game? Knowing Ignatius, I think for sure they have a plan. They're just probably, you know, taking it easy right now. But, um... Yeah, I think they're just trying to let Loyola get a little comfortable. But yeah, right. both confident, confidence coming from both sides. It's good to see. You know, we don't want a one-sided game tonight. That wouldn't be any fun for anyone. <laughs> I agree. All right, Loyola is setting up to kick off the hey, kicker, number ninety-six. Or right. it might not be ninety-six says 96 but we don't have his name here Eddie on Hour. Eddie Hour? Yeah. Eddie Hour is set to kick off. Alright, it's a pa outside run play by Ignatius. That's number 6, Aiden Casey with the run. It's a gain of 10-ish yards. It's a really good run. 
All right. Let's see if Ignatius comes out with another run on the left hash mark. All right. It is a first down All right, that's Ignatius' first down. Let's see if Ignatius can keep up with that roll and keep the momentum going in our favor. Let's say they have a nice setup going on. It's a keeper by the corner. Gain of two, three right, yards. Up the middle. Five yards. All right, that's number nine. Uh, Giorgio Arquilla with the run up the middle. It was a really solid yard gain right after the quarterback got sacked effectively on that same play. Oh, it looks like Ignatius is um, huddling amongst themselves here. Yep, they're in the huddle right now. <laughs> uh, the quarterback just got the play. Let's see what they go out in. It's definitely the same formation that they ran on the last two plays. Looks like Ignatius is pretty confident with that play. That formation, yep. It's a pass play this time, quick pass. Tackled immediately though for no gain. 16, Richard one on the ground. No game. Yeah, he got thrown to the ground by Loyola. If this was the NFL, that would have been called for roughing the passer because anything <laughs> goes there nowadays. <laughs> I agree. All right. Mish comes out with his normal set again. But our uh, number four Inigo Curran is out to punt. It's fourth and five on Ignatius uh, on Loyola's 46 yard line. It's a big kick from Inigo. It looks to be going down to the other side of the field. It rolls to the 10 yard line and then rolls out of bounds. It was a really good kick. It's going to hold Loyola within the 10 yard line. It's going to be pretty hard for them to get out of their own 10. All right, let's see how Ignatius keeps up with this defense to see if they can put pressure on Loyola again. This is just an exciting game, you know? All right, let's, let's see. Ignatius is lined up in its normal defensive set. Loyola has four wide out, three on the right side this time. All right, Loyola has switched quarterbacks. And um, it's now number 10, Jack Fallon. All right, that was a quick run by no, Florence. It's a nice gain of a couple yards. Gain of five, up second down. Do you think Ignatius will score a touchdown within this well, time? Ign Ignatius is on defense right now. Maybe they will get a lucky pick six or a fumble recovery for a touchdown. I agree, you know. It's always goal. Uh, maybe we'll be able to get Loyola to punt off the ball really quickly, down and out. So it's a long, long punt. And that's a pick. That's an interception oh, by number two, so Campbell Callum. That was a nice play on the ball. Oh my goodness. Wow, Ignatius is going insane. With All right, Ignatius is back on offense with even better field position than they had last time. Let's see if they can take advantage of this and score. All right, Ignatius is lining up in its normal set again. Let's see if Ignatius is going to go for a pass play to catch the Ramblers off guard, or they're going to go for another gut run. All right, it's a keeper by the quarterback. He's tackled for no gain by two Loyola players. It looks like to be number 20 and 33. Nick Pomey no and, and Armani Dixon. Yeah. Are good plays by them. They didn't even let the quarterback gain a yard. They were on him immediately on the edge, so that was a nice, nice quick reaction from them. It was. All right, Ignatius comes back out. The same set again. Let's see how we do this time. All right. It's an outside run to number six. It's a gain of five, ten yards. That looks to be like it's going to be a first down. 
Well, it's going to be a couple yards short. That was a very good run by Ian Casey, though. Very close to the first down marker now. It looks like it'll be a distance of three yards. It's a short, easy nine feet for us. Yeah, looks like Ignatius is back in the huddle and they're ready to go perform their play. All right, Ignatius is lined up. Same set as always. Quarterback number 16, Richard Ponce, is getting some information from the coaches. And it's a run up the middle to George, from Georgia Arquilla. He stopped at the line and tackled. Looks, looks to be like, no game. Yeah, looks like number took a hit off of Ignatius. All right. Got it. Look like looks like Ignatius is getting ready to form another play. Wolfpacks, we're back. It's an outside run. That looks to be very close. Oh, that was Touchdown within the 10 yard line. Problem that looks to be the 10 yard line now. Nishis has been moving the ball really well this drive I on agree. mostly run pass on run plays. Let's see if Ignatius will keep with it or they will try something new, maybe catch a little off guard. I think last uh, 12 plays from Ignatius' offensive ball band run plays. Let's see how the Wolf Pack does with this one. All right, it's a quarterback keeper. Looks to be like there's a pitch man, but he decided not to take it. He was taken down for no gain, maybe a loss of one. It's unfortunate. It's first and goal, second down now. I mean, a touchdown is imminent, but Nish just needs to break You never it. know. They might have to settle for your field goal at this point. Second down. Maybe not yet quite yet. They've still got some time, looks to be. With five minutes and 48 seconds left on the clock, they've got plenty of time for a field goal if they don't make it on the next two downs. All right, Ignatius is lined up. Quarterback keeper, he goes up where the guard and tackle are, and he's tackled for a gain of one yard. Ponce is doing really well right now. He's keeping it together. He's having a really good game so far. I think he's gained 10 yards on his own and he's uh, definitely playing very smart tonight, today. And he's uh, had a couple good pitch plays that have sprung Ignatius for 10 to 15 yards each time. Yeah, I mean Ignatius is playing strong today. I mean, seeing Ignatius practice, I mean, they go full five days a week. Six days a week, actually. Six days? Wow. Six days. Only day off is the Lord's Day. <laughs> All right, Ignatius calls third timeout. It was at the half. Timeout. All right, Ignatius must not have liked what they saw there. It's only yeah. third down, though, so they've got some more time yeah, before they have to kick. A timeout to call. Definitely strategizing. Yeah. What do you think the coach is saying, uh, the Ignatius coach is saying to his team right now? Probably about All right. What about the little coach? What do you think he's saying to his team right now? You Any know, words of encouragement? I mean, probably. All right, let's see. Wow, looks like Loyola's team is huge. How yeah. many players? They have over a have roughly 100 players. They fill almost every number on the lineup. Oh, wow. They do have approximately 95. And you aren't they the biggest Jesuit school? 
They are. They are in 8A, right? They're in the 8A division, the largest division in the state. Uh, the requirements for it are that you have to have more than 2,000 students, which the only I, the only high school I can think of that's in the city that meets that number is Lane Tech, which is a very oh, large school. I think they have um, roughly like 4,000. Yeah, Lane Tech has a lot. I think Loyola is considered small in that division with just over 2,000. Another run play, uh, a little to the outside. Looks to be a gain of two yards from Arquilla. That puts us on third down, I believe. Yep, that's third down. Yep, this is third down. Mish. Actually, this may be fourth down, which means that Ignatius is going for the field goal right now. Number 40 is out to kick. That's Joe Loftus. Let's see if he can nail this one down the uprights. It's up, and it's blocked by Loyola. It's a live ball. It's recovered by Loyola. He's running it back. He's getting, he got, he got pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. It's an impressive recovery from Loyola. That was. That, they went about, what? 45 yards. 45, yeah. Yeah, it's a little disappointing for Ignatius not being able to close after getting that really nice interception, bringing it back within five yards, listen to the, to the touchdown, and then getting a field goal block. It's a real big shame. That was a, I mean, respectable, respectable a grab from Loyola, but sad for Ignatius. Yeah, with three minutes and 45 seconds left in the half. Let's see if Ignatius can hold Loyola from scoring again. I hope they do. All right. Do you think it's possible? I think it's definitely possible. With the way Ignatius' defense has been playing today, they definitely stand a very solid chance of keeping it together. The Loyola quarterback number 10 just fouling. Just got a nice four-yard gain off a scrambled play, scrambled pass play. I mean, it looks like Loyola's bringing it, but I know Ignatius is also up to the challenge. Ignatius' uh, sideline looks very anxious for this game right now. Everyone's watching him intently, very nervous based on how Loyola's done in the last couple years. It's another pass play from Fallon oh. to an open number 19. With an open field tackle like, yeah, by number 19, Rory. By Campbell Callum and uh, George York. Very good tackle from them. Unfortunately, Campbell Callum couldn't close the deal immediately. And uh, George York had to help him out, cleaning up number 19. Definitely was a good open field tackle, but a very nice catch from Loyola. Good work by uh, Florence to find the open man who's wide open. Very nice play from them so far. All right, that's an outside run play from number 44. Gain of nine yards, maybe 10 yards on that one. Number 44 is Michael Gaverick. That's a very nice Gaverick. That's a very nice play from him. Wow, it just got so intense all of a sudden. All right, let's see how Ignatius can recover from that. Turns out it was a first down. So this is a new set of downs for the Ramblers. All right, Loyola is coming out with a uh, three-wide set. This is a new formation for him, and it's a run play up the middle from number 44 again. That's Gaverick. Gaverick find out. Uh, they can also strategize during halftime to get that. It's another run play up this middle. He breaks away. He's tackled by number 12, Aiden We met. That's a good play by him. That was a nice tackle. Damage from gain of only two. Very nice play. So Loyola's uh, got two touchdowns. Looks right? like Loyola. Uh, Loyola students have packed the stands. They have a chant going. Oh, yeah. Wow. They had a chant going after that touchdown. The it was a very good one. Yeah, the crowd has the increased. Hmm? The boys. The boys? Yeah, you know. It's definitely a good kick. They made that one, so now it's 14 to 7 in favor of Loyola. Going in, just about going into halftime. Let's see if Ignatius can uh, tie up the score on this one, uh, just like we did with our first touchdown on oh, kickoff. Yeah, they're strategizing right now. 
Uh, that's actually the defensive coordinator. Oh. I don't think he's very happy with them. They let up uh, a couple big gains up the middle and then like a quick, easy pass. So let's let's hope Ignatius' defense yeah, can let's uh, see what happens. get that together and bring it back on the, in the second half and get it back. Can I get some water? Yeah, just off your mic. Yeah, and then turn it off on your mic. All right, let's. Looks like Louisville is going out for a few, uh, for a kickoff. Let's see how deep this one goes for them. They've had some really good ones so far. All right, Louisville is set to kick off. It's a big kick from him, not a squib kick like last time. It's fielded by Ignatius, number two, Campbell Callum, and brought up to the 27-yard line. It's a pretty solid return. All right, Ignatius has the ball with approximately 15 seconds left. Let's see how they do. Welcome back to the Wolf Den. All right, Ignatius is lined up in its normal set. It's an interesting stance from the center. He's got both hands down, one on the ball, one, one to balance. It's a pass play from Ignatius. Deep pass, overthrown. Pass interference, it looks like, though, on Loyola, number four. It's definitely an interesting play, having Inigo Curran against Aiden McHugh. Let's see what, uh, the, let's see what the referees call that as. Such a wholesome sport, you know. Yep. We definitely try to keep it that way. It looks to be, looks like it is on the Ramblers. The chains do look like they're moving. I believe because it was fast interference, that is a 15-yard penalty, which means because he's walking 15. I could. I think that is a 10-yard penalty. All right. It looks like Ignatius on the 42-yard line. Their own 42. Let's see if we can get another pass play. Spread the clock out a bit more with only 54 seconds left on the half. All right, Ignatius is lining up. She's getting a play call. Number two goes in motion. So handoff up the middle immediately stuffed by Loyola. Oh, no. Loyola's defensive line is playing out of their mind tonight. They've stopped almost every gut run we've tried. Is she going to be able to turn that around, or do you think they're doomed to uh, fail with the gut runs? I don't know. I feel like Ignatius' defense isn't, you know, doing that well. They really need to bring it up. All right, that's a quick pass play. It's intercepted by Loyola, it looks like. Or is it... Incomplete pass, it hit the ground before it was picked up. My bad. All right, this brings up third down for the Wolf Pack. Let's see if they can recover. Looks like they're setting up. With 26 seconds left in the half, let's see if Ignatius can get one more. All right, Ignatius is lining up for what might be their last play of the drive. It's third down, 26 seconds left. Are we almost at halftime? We are almost at halftime. 26 okay. seconds left. It's an outside run from number six. Oh, that is Aiden Casey. That is a big run, and there's a looks to be a holding call on in the Wolf Pack. He's going to bring it back. A nice 20 and 25 yard gain. It's a shame. We'll see what the referees call though. That is holding on the Wolf Pack. It's gonna set us back ten yards on top of the law, on top of the big game that we just lost. Let's see if the Wolfpack can recover. I mean, do you think they can recover? 
I think they can definitely recover. We're definitely a resilient team. Uh, our program has only been around for like 15 years at this point, a lot of 14, 15 years. So they've definitely been through a lot of adversary, adversity. So they definitely know how to come back from a difficult, difficult game. Let's see if the Wolfpack can uh, show that strength tonight and come back on this play. Is lining up for third down again. It's an inside run from number nine, Georgia Arquilla. That's a gain of 15 yards, it looks like. Yeah, 15 yards. 15 yards, nice one. Fortunately, it does not get us to the first down line, which means it's fourth down uh, with only approximately like 10 seconds left, I believe. 12 seconds left. I mean, Ignatius has one more play before for the halftime if they're not going to punt it. Yeah. Do you think they're going to punt it or do you think they're going to go for it? Probably punt it. Play safe? Yeah. I mean, they don't really want to risk it. If you were Loyola, would you send an all-out blitz to try to block the punt? You know, if I were Loyola, I'd probably send, you know, a, a blitz. All right, let's see if Loyola tries to block this punt. Punt gets off. It's almost blocked by number 54. That is Patrick Daniels, and then it's, an, oh. and then it's, that is halftime. All oh, right. Uh, it's halftime. Ignatius scores 14 to seven in favor of Loyola. Let's see how the Wolfpack keep up at the start of the third quarter. So, hey, did you watch the game last night? No, nah, I missed it. Great game. Great game. Show off. So, hey, did you watch the game last night? Nah, it's man, I missed it. Great game. Great game. Man. Show off. So, hey, did you watch the game last night? Nah, it's man, I missed it. Great game. Great game. Man. Show off. So, hey, did you watch the game last night? Nah, it's man, I missed it. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labor and not to ask for any reward. Save that of knowing that I'm doing your will. St. Ignatius College Prep sits at 1076 West Roosevelt Road. In the heart of Chicago, students gather from all over the city and state to engage in an exceptional high school experience. St. Ignatius is a Jesuit Catholic college preparatory school. And we are so much more. So much more. We are diverse. We are motivated. We are a community. We are leaders. We are lifelong learners. We strive for excellence. We serve. We inspire. We evolve. We grow. We learn. We work. We work hard. We work together. We challenge ourselves. We innovate. We look forward. We have fun. We acknowledge the injustices of the world. And we work to right these wrongs. We listen and we question. We observe and we take action. We prepare and we succeed. We are religious. We are intellectually competent. 
We are open to growth. We are loving. We are committed to justice. We are men and women for others. We are St. Ignatius College Prep. Ignatian tradition really is about providing a wonderful college prep education that's engaging, that is preparing young people for a very successful college career, but it's even more than that. We're not only concerned about getting people into Harvard, we want to get them into heaven. You're getting a world-class education, but you're also getting a world-class experience and that has left an indelible mark on my life, even to today. He was very outgoing, very gregarious, great leader, even as a freshman. Very vocal, very involved, and you could tell he was gonna be a great leader down the road. If you really wanna talk about challenge, try keeping a good one good. Because when the streets call for your child, it is not a funny thing at all. I definitely remember seeing a lot of violence. I remember seeing my first murder at the age of nine. But what my mom did was she worked very hard to put us in opportunities that would allow us not to be impacted by the activity that was going on right outside our front door. The obvious concern that I had is that their father and I divorced when they were very young. So being concerned that I would be able to raise him and his sister to be healthy, to be happy, to know the ways of Christ. Keeping them focused on that, maybe one day it will make a difference. It was really important to be in an atmosphere where I could enhance my intellect, but also enhance my faith. The tuition assistance program really provided the opportunity for me to grow as an individual, to grow spiritually, to grow academically, those things would not have been possible without the tuition assistance program. The tuition assistance is inspiring because of the level of support for that. The majority of our alumni are people from hardworking families and they know the value of a dollar and many of them had to sacrifice to send their students here and so they really want to try to give back as well. To me it's very compelling it's inspiring to see the generosity that often flows from that. There was something that happened in the deepening of the character, and the only way Redrick had that opportunity, which I'm not at all ashamed to say, is because of the tuition assistance. The friendships that I've formed, that I still maintain today, some of my best friends I met here, some of the greatest people that had some of the greatest impacts on my life I met here. Some of the greatest opportunities that I've had in my life, they happened here at Ignatius. From the bottom of my heart, I cannot express to you how grateful I am for the investment that you made in me by being my benefactor. And I want you to know that this place um, changed my life. I would say to them, thank you for taking an unknown and giving him an opportunity to be known. And I would say, bless you. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. 
to fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labor and not to ask for any reward. Save that of knowing that I'm doing your will. St. Ignatius College Prep sits at 1076 West Roosevelt Road. In the heart of Chicago, students gather from all over the city and state to engage in an exceptional high school experience. St. Ignatius is a Jesuit Catholic college preparatory school. And we are so much more. So much more. We are diverse. We are motivated. We are a community. We are leaders. We are lifelong learners. We strive for excellence. We serve. We inspire. We evolve. We grow. We learn. We work. We work hard. We work together. We challenge ourselves. We innovate. We look forward. We have fun. We acknowledge the injustices of the world. And we work to right these wrongs. We listen and we question. We observe and we take action. We prepare and we succeed. We are religious. We are intellectually competent. We are open to growth. We are loving. We are committed to justice. We are men and women for others. We are St. Ignatius College Prep. Ignatian tradition really is about providing a wonderful college prep education that's engaging, that is preparing young people for a very successful college career, but it's even more than that. We're not only concerned about getting people into Harvard, we want to get them into heaven. You're getting a world-class education, but you're also getting a world-class experience and that has left an indelible mark on my life, even to today. He was very outgoing, very gregarious, great leader, even as a freshman. Very vocal, very involved, and you could tell he was gonna be a great leader uh, down the road. If you really wanna talk about challenge, try keeping a good one good. Because when the streets call for your child, it is not a funny thing at all. 
I definitely remember seeing a lot of violence. I remember seeing my first murder at the age of nine. But what my mom did was she worked very hard to put us in opportunities that would allow us not to be impacted by the activity that was going on right outside our front door. The obvious concern that I had is that their father and I divorced when they were very young. So being concerned that I would be able to raise him and his sister to be healthy, to be happy, to know the ways of Christ, keeping them focused on that, maybe one day it will make a difference. It was really important to be in an atmosphere where I could enhance my intellect, but also enhance my faith. The tuition assistance program really provided the opportunity for me to grow as an individual, to grow spiritually, to grow academically. Those things would not have been possible without the tuition assistance program. The tuition assistance is inspiring because of the level of support for that. The majority of our alumni are people from hardworking families and they know the value of a dollar and many of them had to sacrifice to send their students here and so they really want to try to give back as well. To me it's very compelling, it's inspiring to see the generosity that often flows from that. There was something that happened in the deepening of the character and the only way Redrick had that opportunity, which I'm not at all ashamed to say, is because of the tuition assistance. The friendships that I've formed that I still maintain today. Some of my best friends I met here. Some of the greatest people that had some of the greatest impacts on my life I met here. Some of the greatest opportunities that I've had in my life, they happened here at Ignatius. From the bottom of my heart, I cannot express to you how grateful I am for the investment that you made in me by being my benefactor and I want you to know that this place um, changed my life. I would say to them, thank you for taking an unknown and giving him an opportunity to be known. And I would say, bless you. Ignatian tradition really is about providing a wonderful college prep education that's engaging, that is preparing young people for a very successful college career, but it's even more than that. We're not only concerned about getting people into Harvard, we want to get them into heaven. You're getting a world-class education, but you're also getting a world-class experience and that has left an indelible mark on my life, even to today. He was very outgoing, very gregarious, great leader, even as a freshman. Very vocal, very involved, and you could tell he was gonna be a great leader uh, down the road. If you really wanna talk about challenge, try keeping a good one good. Because when the streets call for your child, it is not a funny thing at all. I definitely remember seeing a lot of violence. I remember seeing my first murder at the age of nine. But what my mom did was she worked very hard to put us in opportunities that would allow us not to be impacted by the activity that was going on right outside our front door. The obvious concern that I had is that their father and I divorced when they were very young. So being concerned that I would be able to raise him and his sister 
to be healthy, to be happy, to know the ways of Christ, keeping them focused on that. Maybe one day it will make a difference. It was really important to be in an atmosphere where I could enhance my intellect, but also enhance my faith. The tuition assistance program really provided the opportunity for me to grow as an individual, to grow spiritually, to grow academically. Those things would not have been possible without the tuition assistance program. The tuition assistance is inspiring because of the level of support for that. The majority of our alumni are people from hardworking families and they know the value of a dollar and many of them had to sacrifice to send their students here and so they really want to try to give back as well. To me it's very compelling, it's inspiring to see the generosity that often flows from that. There was something that happened in the deepening of the character. And the only way Redrick had that opportunity, which I'm not at all ashamed to say, is because of the tuition assistance. The friendships that I've formed, that I still maintain today, some of my best friends I met here, some of the greatest people that had some of the greatest impacts on my life I met here, some of the greatest opportunities that I've had in my life, it happened here at Ignatius. From the bottom of my heart, I cannot express to you how grateful I am for the investment that you made in me by being my benefactor. And I want you to know that this place um, changed my life. I would say to them, thank you. Welcome back, Ignatius. We are starting the third quarter. Ignatius just kicked off to the, to the Ramblers, and the Ramblers brought it back to the 50-yard line. All right. Loyola was stuffed at the line for a loss of one. Yeah, right. All right. He has pretty strong. I believe they can do it, you know. They can stop the Ramblers? Yeah. That's it. No. All right, Loyal is coming up to the line. It's now third down. Loyal got stopped again. They have four wide receivers and one running back. It's a pass play. It's a scramble. And the quarterback number 10, Fallon, ta uh, dove and was tackled. We were told during the halftime that Fallon is actually injured and still playing. Wow. Pretty impressive. A lot of dedication to the team that he's still playing even though he's hurt. You know, I gotta say, football, you have to be 100% all in. Did he hurt his leg? He has a hurt shoulder, actually, so let's see if that'll affect his passing abilities. All right, it's fourth down. Well, he's gonna punt it off back to Ignatius. It's a short, very high kick. Oh, it's oh. Off. the ball's on the ground. Yeah, it almost, almost hit Ignatius' player, which would have been bad. But we avoided it. Now it's Ignatius' ball. We will take, touch the ball on the 30-yard line. That means Ignatius. It looks to be the 31-yard line. That means Ignatius has uh, 79, 69 yards till the touchdown. Let's see if they can get there really quickly or not. They've been having a, they had a lot of momentum at the beginning of the game and uh, towards the end of the second half. Let's see if they can keep it up. Oh, they do. <laughs> All right, handoff up the middle. Oh, it was to, to our Quilla and he was tackled after a gain of two. It's now second down. Number well, on six. The 34. 34 yard line. The 34 yard line, yeah. All right. Our quarterback, Richard Ponce, is in the huddle right now, calling out the play. Huddle just broke, heading up to the line. Go ahead and break his leg. All right, let's see what Ignatius does if they go for another run play or pass play. You know, I honestly think they'll go for a run play. 
Ignatius band trying to they get some enthusiasm into the offense. The oh, they have dropped several, haven't they? Or is that the choir that drops mixtapes every year? I think that's the choir, you know? I've listened Ooh. to a couple of them. We definitely need a band mixtape. Mr. Stefan leading them out? I, I think it could definitely be a, the hottest mixtape of 2018. You know, uh, Billboard, top 100, number one on the Art. Number one for the next like five years, no question. <laughs> hmm? yeah. Wow, you know, the crowd's really feeling it. Some people are dancing out there. Everyone in the stands looks to be a little nervous though. Everyone's but, I mean, silent. It's, cold it's a tense out. game. Yeah, it's definitely getting colder out. I think it's almost 50 degrees outside. Glad I'm wearing a sweatshirt. Yeah. It's a good thing it's uh it's unfortunate for our cameraman who does not have a sweater, actually. Oh, yeah. Let's see if uh, we can get him to stay warm really quick. Get out of here. Paper by birthday. All right. It's a quick gain of a couple yards. Looks to be three yards. Let's, three yards. Let's bring it up third down for the Wolf Pack. Third and two. Third and two from the Wolf Pack. Let's see what play they go for. Do you think it's gonna be a run up the middle or a run to the outside for this last for these two yards before a first down? Uh probably the outside. Outside run, try to get a big gain instead of the yeah, guaranteed mean, short. Yeah. But I don't know, Ignatius has been playing it safe so far. Yeah. Alright. I was a nice very close. Looks like it stopped one two yards mm -hmm. short. Pulling up fourth down. One Ignatius player looks to be injured, number 52. That is. Walter Johnson. Let's see how he does. Hopefully, he'll get a quick break. Hopefully, it's nothing bad. He's definitely an integral part of our offensive line. We need him. All right. Brings up fourth and one. Ignatius is going for it. Loyal is definitely stacking the uh, defensive line, hoping to catch Ignatius off guard. And that is the first down by Giorgio Arquilla. Nice two-yard run. Wow, Giorgio Arquilla is putting a lot of effort in the game. Oh, yeah. All right, what do you think the pack is going to do with these next set of downs? Do you think they're going to keep with the running plays, or do you think they'll try a couple pass plays? I think a couple pass plays, you know? A couple pass plays, try yeah. to get a deep, deep play, maybe hopefully not get an interception. Yeah. It's an outside run by number two. Oh, wow. That is Campbell Callum. That is Gainham. 10, 15 yards. Yeah, very nice hard. run by the Wolf Pack. That was very respectable. That puts us on the 35, well, it was 35 yard line. That puts Ignatius, 41 yard line. That puts Ignatius in good scoring position if they keep it up. All right, let's see what Ignatius does with this fresh set of downs. You know, I think they're just going to go big. Go big, go for another outside run, hopefully yeah. spring it the other way. Looks to be like that, except uh, we're stuffed at the line. Oh, no. It's a loss of two, it looks like. Pulling up second down with 11 yards to go before a first down. Let's see what uh, Mo Coach Miller has decided for the Wolf Pack. Yeah, I wonder what he's saying. Or deciding. Looks to be anxious on the sidelines. Let's see if he can spring us for a big gain. It's a pass play. He's looking oh, deep. And it's, oh. it's, a, it's 
caught by the wolf pack. That was a very impressive catch. But he took it out of the uh, Loyola defense's hand. Loyola attempted to grab it, but... Loyola nearly caught it, and the Wolfpack literally ripped it out of his hands. That was exciting. For a that nice was... gain. That puts Ignatius with a new set of downs on the 22-yard line. 20-yard line. That gives Ignatius a very good scoring opportunity. Even if we don't get a touchdown, we can kick another. We can attempt another field goal. Hopefully, this one does not get blocked like last time. All right, that's a run to the outside. By Joe, Lo that was a nice run to the outside by Joe Loftus. Nice gain of eight, nine yards. That brings up second down and one or two. That's bringing us down to the Rambler 12-yard line. Let's see how we keep up. Hopefully, let's score on this next play. You know, I think a touchdown is bound to happen, too. Touchdown's definitely bound to happen, especially when you have all this momentum like the Wolfpack does. Especially uh, touchdown being right next to the home stands. We definitely have uh, all the enthusiasm. Yeah, Our players can sure. see all their friends out there. Alright, so run up the middle, gain three yards from Aquila, nice run. Five minutes and 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Let's see how Ignatius finishes out this drive. Alright, that brings... Ignatius to be first and goal first on goal the eight the yard line. line. In the nine yard line. Let's see how Ignatius can uh, let's see how they decide to get into the end zone. Run plays or do you think they'll go for a play action pass? Yeah. Yeah, they will. This be an outside run play. Oh. Number six. That is Aiden Casey. Nice run. It's for a loss of yards. He tried to spread the spread the field. Unfortunately, the field didn't spread fast enough, and Loyola uh, crammed, came down on him pretty hard and stacked, but he seems to be fine. Let's you know, see how we recover. I thought they were going to get Ignatius is lining up again. This is second down. The pass play to the outside. And that's caught by Ignatius for a touchdown. Who daddy? That's another touchdown for the Wolfpack. That makes the score 13 to 14 real right now before we kick the field goal. Maybe the Wolfpack will go for two. Hopefully get ahead. Uh, hold the oil from scoring again. Yeah, it looks like they're both tied now. <laughs> Ignatius is down by one. It looks like they're going for the field goal, which will tie the game up. I'm interested to see how the Rambler, Ramblers will respond after this uh, field goal attempt. Kickers Joe Loftus, it's up, and it's good. Exciting. That makes it a tie ball game. Exciting. All right, Ignatius is set to kick off in a couple seconds. Let's, let's see, Ignatius is definitely very excited with that touchdown and field goal. Everyone's celebrating on the field. Might be a little premature. We have not won the game yeah, yet. We don't know yet, yeah. Still got a whole nother quarter. Wow, Ignatius is really happy over here. Yeah, they definitely got out of a rut. They haven't scored since the very first play of the game. I didn't even really play. It was kickoff. Um, since opening kickoff, that was their only score of the game so far, till now. So this is definitely a breath of fresh air in the Wolfpack offense. I agree. Hopefully now they've got uh, the confidence to go out, stop the Loyola defense. Hopefully they have the momentum now with the fans excited and energized along with the defense after that pep talk from their coach, Coach Pete. Let's see if uh, they can hold the Wolf, the Ramblers from scoring again. All right, Ignatius.
Ignatius is getting out there to kick off. And then go current is set to kick off very shortly. Setting up. Let's see if he goes for a squib kick again like he did last time or for a deep kick. Kicking. It's a fairly deep kick, line drive to number five on the Ramblers. He's bringing it up to the 30 yard line. That's a very nice tackle from Marquilla. He's been playing out of his mind tonight. Or actually, my bad, that is Ben Perez. He's been having some good plays today. Arquilla has also been playing exceptionally well. Number eight and number nine are playing very well. These windows are open. All right, let's see what the Rambler offense comes out in. They've definitely been favoring the pass a lot in these very recent drives. Do you think they're going to go down the field? I definitely think they're going to go down the field a bit. Uh, we have to see how the Wolfpack responds, though. Uh, let's see if they fix the issue with uh, Flores going up the middle of the field. They look to have, as that was a run up the middle for a gain of one yard. So that's a very good stop by the Wolfpack. Flores. So it's a good stop by Ignatius. Um, let's see if they can also cut off the deep threat without giving up the, uh, the middle of the field. Should be interesting to see how Ignatius balances the two. It's a pass by the by the Ramblers. I was caught by looks like number eight on the Ramblers, which is Trevor Caban. Caban, Caban. <laughs> Gotta say, the Ramblers have the more interesting last names than the Wolfpack so far. We've got Lombardi, Holloway, Ford, Cabanaban, Macintosh, O'Flattery, Van Zelst. Boo's is definitely a very interesting one. It's, another, it's an interception from the Wolfpack. Giorgio Arquilla with the interception. He's played out of his mind tonight. He has had one pick. He's had several tackles for losses and three open field tackles. He is playing very well tonight. Honestly, I feel like you know Ignatius is making a comeback compared to their first half. Exciting. Whatever the Ignatius coach said in the locker room, definitely got the Ignatius team very excited. It's very good to see, uh, especially with the, uh, the momentum we now have going into the third and fourth quarter. Let's see how the Wolf Pack keeps up. Maybe we'll score again with only three minutes and 27 seconds left in the third quarter. Let's see how the Wolf Pack keeps up. All right, incomplete pass deep. It was definitely looking for the end zone. Unfortunately, Aiden Boyle couldn't wrangle that one in. All right, looks like the Wolfpack is still on the 40 yard line, 41 yard line you know, of the Ramblers. I'm confident in them, I think they still got it. Let's see how the Wolfpack handle that loss. Uh, that loss of downs. Looks like they're setting up. This is a new, uh, this is definitely a new formation for the Wolfpack. We have two wide receivers out on the left side instead of split one and one. Maybe they're going to go for a jet sweep to the left side as that is the longer side so, of the field. Yeah. Maybe for a pass play, we'll find out. It's definitely an outside run play. It's definitely almost like a jet sweep. That is number 16, Richard Pones, with the big gain. Good play by him. So, Elizabeth, do you think Ignatius has a chance of uh, winning the Jesuit Cup for football for the first time in 15 years? You know. If Ignatius keeps playing like they're playing with like being competitive, having that enthusiasm, and believing in each other as a team, I believe they can do it, you know? We'll I'm see. 
We'll see. I definitely believe Wolfpack are going to pull it off tonight. Hopefully, they're, yeah. having, they're playing out of their minds. Uh, a couple mistakes by Loyola. Definitely giving the Wolfpack a lot of energy tonight. It's good to see us uh, playing very well, especially against our bitter arch rival, Loyola. Yeah. Did you see the basketball game, the Jesuit Cup last year? Uh, we actually filmed that last year. That's exciting. Yeah, we film it every year. Loyola, yeah. unfortunately, won by a couple points. But the girls team did win. Girls team did win. That was a very exciting game to watch. Fish is lining up once again. All right. Post is under center. That's under center. Let's see how he does. It looks like a keeper. Pitch play to the outside. Number nine, Arquilla. It's definitely a game of at least five, six yards. That brings up third down and three. All right, let's let's see how the Wolf Pack convert on this third down, or else we're going to be end up kicking another field goal. What do you think the Wolf Pack are going to do? No. Run play or pass play? I think they might run play. You know? That's a first down for the Wolf Pack. It's actually a first down for the Wolf Pack. There might have been a penalty on that play, or the referees decided to respot the ball based on new evidence. All right, that gives us a new set of downs. First down, and what looks to be almost goal. In the 16-yard line, that means we have 16 yards to go. First down and 10 yards. We'll be on the six-yard line. Ignatius has. Ignatius gets a quick gain of two yards from Arquilla. So, Elizabeth, have there been any events around school that you've seen and been excited for in the last couple of weeks? Well, I mean, freshman mixer happened, and I heard that was exciting. Um, it's always a very exciting time for the today, freshmen. Today, our first sophomore retreat group came back. Oh, how was that? I heard that they enjoyed it. That was a very um, opening experience. The retreats are definitely an opening experience for everyone. Yeah, I remember my sophomore retreat. <laughs> For sure. Uh, I believe our first Kairos group of the year also returned today. That's which is exciting. Nice. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen one. There's a quick outside run by number seven of the Wolf Pack, Bill oh. Brady. He's down on to the. That is a such a wait no six yard line. That is on the six yard line for the Wolf Pack. That gives us first and goal. We have four downs to go six yards. Let's see how the Wolf Pack manage. Alright, Wolf Pack's in the huddle. Let's see how they let's see if they can uh, continue on this momentum right after that drive from Bill Brady. Ooh. Timeout from the Wolf Pack. They must have been running the clock, the play clock, down very low and had to call this timeout. Maybe they couldn't have gotten the playoff. Maybe they wanted to rethink their strategy. Maybe go 10 seconds left in the third quarter. I think Ignatius really wants to capitalize on running into their home crowd. So I think that's why they called that timeout. Try to get Big into out. the end. Yeah. Get a lot of energy into the team right before the fourth quarter. Definitely a big uh, confidence booster if you're scoring and immediately seeing your, your peers, some of your teachers right when you score. It's definitely a very nice feeling to, feel, to have. Wolfax coming back out. Ramblers are still in the huddle. So Elizabeth, who's your favorite teacher so far this year? Scarponi. Heard know, a lot of good things about him. He's a very interesting teacher, I've heard. You know, I really enjoy his class because he's so expressive and you really want to learn, you know? That's one thing that um, as you get older at Ignatius, the teachers do get uh, very good at what they're teaching, so students tend to be very interested in what they're learning. For what instance, about you? For instance, I have Mr. Strobel for AP uh, Calculus and AP Physics. Wow. And so I see him every day several times. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's a fumble recovery by the Ramblers. 
Looks like Ignatius lost the ball on the seven yard line. Unfortunately, that means it's the Ramblers' ball on their own seven. Let's see if we can get a safety. End of the third quarter means it's going to be Ramblers ball on their own seven. Still tied at 14-14. We'll see how uh, let's see how the two teams face off. <laughs> Loyal and Bench seems to be having a big uh, big chant going. Let's go Ramblers. So, Adam. Tell me, who is your favorite teacher so far this year? Uh, if I have to be honest, my favorite teacher so far uh, would be Dr. Miller. Uh, he's great at teaching history. He's been doing it for 12 years, and he's absolutely an amazing man. Yeah. I have unfortunately never had... Uh, I agree. I, I've heard so many good I've things. never had him. I, I had uh, Mr. Jones sophomore year. I had Mr. Jones as well. He is an amazing teacher. He he's, has, uh, you know, cultural experience because he's from Britain. He's British, yes. That it was. It's definitely a very interesting perspective um, when we talk about 9/11 in that class, sophomore yeah. year, uh, from the British perspective of like what it was like for him, hearing about it learned, in his yeah, town. Yeah, like the American and the British like aspects, and I thought that was a really cool part of his class. It's definitely an interesting way to connect the two. All right, let's see how the Wolf Pack. Handle up on defense now that the fourth quarter is starting. 12 minutes left in the game. It's tied 14 14. Let's see how the Wolf Pack play on defense. Ignatius seems to be playing his zone defense, leaving uh, the third wide receiver for the Ramblers open. All right. It's a handoff to Flores. Run to the left, and he's tackled around the eight-yard line by number seven of the Wolf Pack, Bill Brady. It was a good play by him. I agree. All right, let's, let's see if the Ramblers uh, keep on rambling or if they slow down a little bit, try to wind out the clock. It's a pass play from the Ramblers. Oh, it's a draw pass by number 15 of the Ramblers. That's 19. That is our, that is Rory Boos. He's having a good game so far. Unfortunately, he couldn't hold on to that one. Adam. Adam. All right. Rambler's oh, going for another pass by a quick pass. To number 11. To number 11. Already he's definitely Collins. He's sprung it for a nice gain up, the, up to the 25-yard line. Definitely good for the Ramblers because now they're out of their own end zone and they get a little more breathing room. They don't have to play um, so quickly. Try to get in the ball off as quickly as possible to avoid a safety. Run play for Flores up the middle. Gain of 10 yards from him. Nice one. Tackled by a tackled by a very large group of uh, Ignatius players. Yeah. It's good to see the Wolfpack all running to the ball very as a team. No one's getting no one's being seen left out. Everyone clearly wants to tackle. And let's have three wide receivers on the left and Flores to the left of the quarterback. It's a handoff to Flores to the right. Oh, he cuts it back inside. He's tackled from behind by number two. That is Campbell Callum. That's a nice tackle behind. Unfortunately, that was a first down. The Ramblers are on the 48 yard line, on the Ignatius 48 yard line. So they've crossed the 50 yard line. It's another run to Flores. He starts in the backfield, dodges three Ignatius players, and then gains four yards. Looks like Ignatius is no longer being able to stop Flores. What do you think, uh, 
Elizabeth, what do you think the coach has said to Flores to get him this excited? Um, and he's had these many, this many good gains. When you know, he's probably telling him to think about, you know, winning, getting all that fame. But uh, it's up to him, you know, it's the love of the game. Probably really enjoys playing football. Definitely the one thing both teams have a ton of, love for the game. <laughs> Look at how many like, loyal students have filled the stands. Everyone's very excited for this game. Well, was running a pass play. Quarterback's almost tackled. And it's an incomplete pass, but there's a flag on the play. Looks like it's going to be against Ignatius, which is going to give the Ramblers an automatic first down. Seems the Loyola, Loyola, uh, Loyola, not even in their bench. It's their fans that are chanting, uh, you can't do that. It's a very common uh, chant from both the Wolfpack <laughs> and the Ramblers. At any time, there's a penalty for just about any sport. It's definitely a classic chant from both teams. Let's see how the uh, Wolfpack recover. <laughs> Ramblers line up in shotgun. They've got three wide receivers left. And Florence to the left of the quarterback. It's another handoff to Florence to the right side. He's left wide open. There's a flag on the play. It's most likely a holding penalty on the offense based on the flag location. But Florence did get the first down, so we'll see if that's called back. There is also an injury timeout. Um, which player? Do you know? Does look like does look like it could be holding one of the offense. it is a holding penalty against the offense that means it will get called back it will not be a first down and also it looks like that penalty or that injury could be it is a Loyola player it could be Florence unfortunately for the Ramblers so that would mean they've lost their workhorse running back Go. It's a very close game. It's yeah. a lot closer than many people predicted based on the results from the last several years. Go to the store and buy one of those, like the big massive ones. I love that popcorn. We have a fellow senior here, Noah Conroy, who just brought popcorn up to the booth. <laughs> what do you have to say? What's your reasoning behind this choice? Uh, I would have to say that I brought this popcorn because I won it in a bet, and now I have to eat it before it goes stale. That is definitely an issue with popcorn, especially the gourmet variety, because they, they do tend to go stale because they're made fresh. I think we should no, we're not being paid by them. Personally, like the best personally, I'm more of a fan of like the cheese like flavored popcorn than caramel. The cheddar popcorn. The cheddar, yeah, that was the term I was looking for. Quick. Exactly, I, yeah. Caramel popcorn does get old quick, but it's nice when you mix the caramel just, with the, the sweet with salty. the cheddar. It definitely tastes mm -hmm. really I'm good. I'm more a fan of the salty. They should make a cheese popcorn that doesn't leave cheese on the impossible. I don't think it's possible to make make cheese popcorn without leaving any cheese residue. That is when that is when you know that you like humanity has reached its peak. Yeah, that's when you know we're prospering. All right, the pass sure. to number 44 of the Ramblers. That is Michael Gavrick. Nice pickup of some yardage from him. Unfortunately. Because there was a loss of yards, they're back five yards, so five to ten yards without holding penalty. So it is second down, uh, 15. Do you think Ignatius will come out on top tonight? Hmm? Ramless going up for second down. 
Nice quick pass. It is an incomplete pass, unfortunately. And it looks like we're not, we're starting to knock up uh, Florence. Not in Florence. Um, Ten of the Ramblers. That is Jack Fallon, the quarterback, who is injured. We must remember. So it must be very painful for him to get knocked, uh, knocked around like this. Let's uh let's see if Ignatius can uh rough up uh rough up Fallon a bit more and maybe get him out of the game because he's definitely a very deep threat and a big oh. issue for the Ignatius offense. Oh. Especially after that incredible pass from Fallon is good and luckily for us incomplete. This brings up fourth down on the, uh, the Ignatius 40 or 37 yard line. And this means Ignatius. That means this means Loyola is going for a punt. Most likely going to go out the back of the end zone and be a touchback for the Wolfpack. Maybe um, maybe if uh, Loyola Kicker's feeling it today, they'll be able to uh, keep us within the 5 to 10 yard line. It's definitely be an issue for the Wolfpack. We need more color commentary. Like, we need to have more back and forth rather than just some Looks like, looks, one, looks like one Loyola player is injured. Looks like uh, oh, number no. 31, maybe? From the Ramblers is hurt. He limped off to the sideline. Number 31, Johnny Ryan on the Ramblers? Yeah. Oh, no. That might be an issue for him. Let's see, uh, see how they recover and adapt to this, uh, this new development. It's to be a, a nice inside run for the Wolfpack. Unfortunately, it was no game. This brings up uh, Everyone second Everyone looks a little down. tired on the field. Yeah, it's the fourth quarter. We've been playing for a while. I think the one advantage Loyola has right now is that they have so many players that a lot of their players have to be well rested and ready to go. Except the Wolfpack. I mean, yeah, they have do have 94 players. I know. And then with 8 minutes and 12 seconds left in the game, with Ignatius on its own 20, uh, 15, 15 yard line, let's see how they recover. Alright, that's a, that's a big run by the Wolfpack. Wow. That brings us up to the 30-yard line, 33, 30-yard line. It's a nice game from the Wolfpack. That definitely gives us a new first down. It's exciting. Alright, Nish just has a run up the middle. Looks like a little fumble there. Looks to be a gain of one or two. This brings up third down. Third down for the Wolf Pack. Let's see if we can recover. Get a first down. I hope so. So are there any other sports uh, that are going on in the upcoming weeks? Do you know, Elizabeth? Um, you know, well, I am on the golf team, and uh, our season's coming to an end soon, sadly. But um, our, cha our championships are coming up in the next two weeks, so we're preparing up for that. Isn't there a, isn't there a golf meet on Monday? Yes, there is. An in incomplete pass for the Wolfpack brings up fourth down. 
Oh, so what is it like to be a golfer for the Ignatius so, Wolf Band? Well, a regular day for me is um, on the weekends I go out to the range and I just, you know, hit some golf balls. And it's just exciting. And then when you're out, you're playing with someone from your own team. You're playing two other members. And usually, you know, there's the cohesion. You have some good laughs on the course. You know, golf is really hit or miss. Like one hole you could be doing amazing and then you could be failing the next hole. So it's definitely a high intensity sport. For sure. I mean, people wouldn't assume that, but it really is. You, you know, you're walking miles, you're hitting golf balls in the heat. It's exciting. It's like it's really hot out there. I believe oh, there are some yeah. golf courses that um, actually have a cart that goes around throughout throughout the day and serves Sadly, people like water. I don't know if uh, they're allowed to do that during high school events. Sally, they don't. We have our uh, coaches on golf carts. Oh, that's gotta be nice for them. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, high schoolers aren't allowed to rent golf carts until they're like 18, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate. Oh, wow, look at our number line five. line drive punt to Loyola, that's a uh, By Jerry five. Lombardi. He recovered it, gained approximately five yards before he attacked by the wolf pack. It brings the uh, Ramblers to the 50 yard line in midfield we where have they have the ball. Six minutes to go. Six minutes. Let's see if uh, the wolf pack can hold them, bring us into overtime. Or hopefully score in those six minutes. Prevent, prevent the Ramblers from uh, scoring as well. Win this game. Get this dub for the boys. <laughs> Saturdays are for the boys, am I right? It's Friday, leading off into Saturday. <laughs> Gotta start off the day well. <laughs> yep. Pass play by Florence. Caught by him. <laughs> Caught by Rory Booz. Nice pick up by him. He was tackled out of bounds though, so I do believe that stops the clock at this point in the game. <laughs> Very, very exciting stuff happening. Definitely a very close and tense game. I will agree with you on that one. <laughs> That's a play action pass. Play or not a play action pass. A fake pass or a run play. Ramblers get a first down on that. Uh, and that brings them to what looks to be the 35 yard line of the Wolf Pack. Just definitely getting a little nervous because they're almost getting into field goal territory, which could uh, put the Ramblers ahead for the overall game, which might be an issue. Wow, the crowd's chanting again. It's getting pretty heated. Yeah. Our. Uh, our Spirit team, our cheerleading team is definitely trying to keep the boys excited. <laughs> this is a big game. <laughs> Number eight, uh, <laughs> Trevor Cabana. <laughs> Looks like there is some frustration on the Ignatius <laughs> team. I did see one of the Wolfpack try to swat the ball out of the player's hand after the tackle. So let's see if um, these players are letting their emotions get a hold of them a little too much. Let's see. Let's hopefully, hopefully this game does not get too intense to the point where uh, there is, there are penalties. We definitely don't want to see that. Wouldn't you agree, Elizabeth? Yes, I agree completely. It's an incomplete pass. This does bring up, I believe, second down. Yeah. All right, we've got a shout out for Toby Elijah. <laughs> All right, Ramblers are on their second down. It's another pass play from the Ramblers. Florence steps up and throws the ball deep and is bobbled. And it looks to be close call. Looks like it could be out of bounds or it could be in. Let's see what the referees call. They call it an incomplete pass. Which brings up third down. Thankfully, that was incomplete because that was deep and it was in the end zone. That would have been a bad, bad position for the Wolf Pack to be in. We've got five more minutes to go. So 
So, are you excited for this weekend with college football and uh, NFL football? You know, personally, I uh, have never watched an NFL football game. Oh, wow. Well, you can definitely watch the, the Bears, who are pretty good this year, just like the Wolfpack. Have you ever been to a Bears game? I actually have been to a Bears game. Last year I went to the uh, Bears-Packers game. I've never been to a game. That was a little, it was a, it was a rough game. Uh, I think we were starting Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, he, was a, he was a rookie at the time. Uh, I think it was his first or second game as the starter, which was tough. I actually hmm? attended the Northwestern football game. Oh, nice. Loyola well, we'll is kicking a field goal right now. Let's see if they're going to attempt the field goal. Let's see if they're going to make it. I'm, this is so nerve-wracking. Oh, and it looks and it's like up. they did not. And it's no good. This is as Ignatius' is ball with five minutes left in the game. Wow. Let's see how the Wolfpack will recover and hopefully it will score and win the game. Game's getting more and more exciting. Let's find out. Uh, let's find out if the Wolfpack can uh, keep the tempo up. <laughs> Looks like the Ignatius. Uh, Arupes are leaving a run around oh, wow. by the uh, gotta love the Arupe mentor by the program. visitor section. It are looks you like an I'm uh, not an Arupe, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I'm not I'm not an Arupe. Wow. I mean, it's it's pretty cold out there, so I guess they're just trying to hype everyone up. Trying to stay warm. You definitely don't want to get cold out there and get a cramp going. <laughs> you gotta do everything you gotta do out there, you know. That is, wow. Yeah, you know, I've never seen this in. before. I've never seen the, uh, the seniors go for a lap around the field. They're now on the other side, uh, looking 90-ish yards to the, to the ram at the Wolfpack. You know, it's senior season. It is always senior season, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> as a senior, I can't confirm you it know, is senior season. You know, as a junior, I um. Yeah, we don't have a junior season. Mm -hmm. I come second semester when you have to write a research paper. Um, yeah, we're gearing up for that actually, sadly. It's a very exciting time. You gotta read a book. Um, I'm not looking forward to so it. So you can pick a short, two short stories or a novel. Uh, I read mine. I read 1984 by George Orwell and wrote my paper on that. It's a. It's definitely very interesting. You get to pick your own topic and write your own. <laughs> write your own pieces I mean, about it. Currently in English, we just read um, the poem Beowulf. Very, very interesting um, poem. Yeah, I'm currently writing my uh, paper on King Rothgar. And That's here a pass by by Ignatius. And just like Beowulf, he triumphs over evil and gets a <laughs> nice pickup of first down for the Wolf Pack. Unfortunately, it does look like he's injured. He is down. That was a pretty big hit. Oh, no. Like the yeah, the trainers are running out there. This isn't looking good. Hopefully Down on his okay. side, it looked like the uh, Rambler's helmet could have caught his arm a little oh, bit no. uncomfortably. We'll see what happens. Number 28 of the Wolfpack, Aiden Boyle, is hurt. He's oh. walking off the field, though. Looks like he just needs some help. Looks like he's holding his ribs. Those could have been hurt from that hit. Looks like he is recovering pretty well. <laughs> All right, while well, this injury timeout continues. We got three more minutes. Injury timeout is over. Let's see how Ignatius does with the three minute drill. And Ignatius 38. Do you think they can go for more pass plays, which risk a lot, but uh, stop the clock if it's an incomplete? Or do you think they'll go for run plays, which will continue to run out the clock? Probably run plays, you know. I mean, they're tied. I guess they just want to keep it tied until they go into overtime. Yes, yeah. you were right. Looks that was like a run by Aquila. Student body's moving to the other side. Looks like everyone from the Ignatius student body 
or just about everyone from the Ignatius team body has run down to the other end zone to cheer on their team so that way they can see it. That's a, that's a big play by the seniors to get everyone to go down there. Give As everyone. Said, senior season. Senior season. It's really helping out the Wolfpack right now. It's just getting them to see the goal, see the people they're playing for down there, cheering them on. It definitely can give them some encouragement. It's a pitch play to the outside. The play is unfortunately called dead by the referees. It looks to be a false start on the Wolfpack that will put us back five yards, which will bring up second and 11. Fortunately, we had so much uh, momentum going, don't you think? I agree. You know, Ignatius has all this energy, and this oh, crowd cheering them on is continuing their energy, getting them geared up. It's definitely a big thing for the Wolfpack. Hopefully, hopefully we'll keep it together, get a uh, score a touchdown on this drive, and the game out. Hopefully, yeah. Alright, Pones lines up under center. It's in a, it looks to be a near empty backfield. Oh, looks to be a pass to the outside. Pones is tackled, but he gets the ball off in time to number two, Campbell Cowden. That is a first down for the Wolfpack. That Campbell is, is still so down, exciting. and he's hurt his foot. Looks like, looks like we're gonna have another injury timeout. This isn't good. Looks like the Ignatius team is carrying him off the field. And then he goes down, hopefully to get that injury timeout. He's definitely injured to begin with. His team tried to carry him off the field, but that won't stop the clock. So they had to put him down. He's limping off the field. He got up quick, though. It's a good play by the Wolfpack. he's okay. Yeah, it's our second player in a row that... Second player in very sh quick succession that went down. With two minutes left in the game, two minutes and eight seconds left, we have time before going into the two-minute warning. First and ten, Wolfpack, from the Rambler, Let's see if the Wolfpack can get some yards. Two minutes and eight? Two minutes, two minutes left. One minute and 55 seconds left wow. in the game. Do you think Ignatius can push through? You definitely want him to. Oh, oh it's a fumble! But the oh, Wolfpack pick it up. But the Wolfpack pick it up. That brings up. Bring what? That brings what? up second down. There was a little miscommunication. Pones was getting tackled from several what players, and he decided to pitch the ball. Anxious? It definitely means they're getting anxious. Yeah. When uh, the quarterback decides to risk it and to pitch the ball to someone who's not expecting it like that, it's definitely showing he's a little nervous about the play, especially the game as a whole. Uh, him being the quarterback and being the game manager, he has to. He has to think about the clock and how to manage that. Keep the team moving throughout. Make sure we don't get stuck without a play. Wow, he, wow, All right, that was seven. a pass play to number seven, <laughs> Bill Brady. That brings us back to third and 10. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can recover, get that first down, score. Hmm? We have less than a minute left to go. Less than a minute left in the game. We might be going to overtime, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, fact, going for another pass play. He's looking deep to number 28. Oh, 35. Intercepted. But no, it's not intercepted. It's an oh. incomplete pass. Never mind. Incomplete, incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. That brings up fourth down for the Wolf Pack. Looks to be the Ignatius, Ignatius team is put, bringing out the punt team. It's unfortunate because that means that we are going to punt it off with 35 seconds left. It means we're probably going to go into overtime unless the Ramblers are able to return it or the Wolfpack get a pick six or a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Oh, I'm so nervous. It's a nail biter for sure. Something in the closest game between the Wolfpack. Oh near, my god. Nearly blocked. Fair catch canceled by number five. Wait, so that is on the one yard line for the Wolfpack. That is inches. That is so exciting. Oh. That is 
That was within the one yard line. Wow. That is a punt within one yard so of the they end have zone. One yard to go for a touchdown. It is. It would be a safety in that case because it's now the Ramblers' ball. The Ignatius, uh, the Ignatius uh, defense crowd has to tackle cheering. for a loss. And if they get that tackle for loss of yard, it will most likely be a safety, which will put us ahead. And it's our ball again. Let's see how the Wolfpack handle this situation. This is so exciting. The referees seem to have spotted it at the two yard line instead of the one yard line. With 24.3 seconds left in the game. So oh. a big run by, by the Ramblers. Gain of a yard with 19 Pitbull seconds left. The clock is still running though. 15, it looks like the Ram timeout called. Clock has been stopped. With 14.8 seconds left in the fourth quarter. With the ball on the six yard line. Let's see if the Wolf Pack can recover. It's definitely a nail biter. Do you think the Wolf Pack can pull it out? I mean, with 19 seconds to go, they were literally two yards away from a touch, six yards away from a touch. The safety, I think they can do it. If you were the Wolf Pack defensive coordinator, what do you think you'd be telling the troops right now? You know, you gotta gotta put your best foot forward. You know, put all the effort you can give. Definitely, that's definitely what he's uh, telling them. Especially how close the game is. It's tied still with uh, 14.8 seconds left. Oh, wow. It's probably the last or second to last play of the game. I think the Wolfpack have one more timeout, one or two more timeouts left over. Let's see how we do. We have several players deep as uh, we think we're gonna, they're going to pass the ball. It is a pass. It is a fake. And he's tackled. It's a safety. We'll find out. They're calling him down on the one. That is a shame. That means there is no time left before the fourth quarter is over. It's a shame that definitely was a safety. He was he was in the end zone when he was tackled. The referees seem to be consulting whether it was a safety or not. They're saying he was outside, which is means it's not a safety, and the game is Still tied. No. I wonder. That means we are going into overtime. It looks like number 50 of the Wolf Pack, Jake Miles, arguing with the referees about the about that play. This is very intense right now. Oh boy. It's a very tense game. Let's You let's know, see, uh, you can feel the tension coming from the wolf pack. I think you feel the tension from both sides. You know what? I agree. You can uh there's it's absolute silence on both sides. There's a little cheering from the Ignatius side. They're shaking the fence, trying to get everyone excited. The Ramblers are quiet. Most of the players seem to be funneling out. I guess they don't have too high of hopes for this game. All right, we'll be back in three minutes at the start of overtime. For taking an unknown and giving him an opportunity to be known. And I would say, bless you.
Ignatian tradition really is about providing a wonderful college prep education that's engaging, that is preparing young people for a very successful college career, but it's even more than that. We're not only concerned about getting people into Harvard, we want to get them into heaven. You're getting a world-class education, but you're also getting a world-class experience. And that has left an indelible mark on my life, even to today. He was very outgoing, very gregarious, great leader, even as a freshman. Very vocal, very involved, and you could tell he was going to be a great leader down the road. If you really want to talk about challenge, try keeping a good one good. Because when the streets call for your child, it is not a funny thing at all. I definitely remember seeing a lot of violence. I remember seeing my first murder at the age of nine. But what my mom did was she worked very hard to put us in opportunities that would allow us not to be impacted by the activity that was going on right outside our front door. The obvious concern that I had is that their father and I divorced when they were very young. So being concerned that I would be able to raise him and his sister to be healthy, to be happy, to know the ways of Christ, keeping them focused on that, maybe one day it will make a difference. It was really important to be in an atmosphere where I could enhance my intellect, but also enhance my faith. The tuition assistance program really provided the opportunity for me to grow as an individual, to grow spiritually, to grow academically. Those things would not have been possible without the tuition assistance program. The tuition assistance is inspiring because of the level of support for that. The majority of our alumni are people from hardworking families, and they know the value of a dollar, and many of them had to sacrifice to send their students here, and so they really want to try to give back as well. To me, it's very compelling. It's inspiring to see the generosity that often flows from that. There was something that happened in the deepening of the character, and the only way Redrick had that opportunity, which I'm not at all ashamed to say, is because of the tuition assistance. The friendships that I've formed that I still maintain today. Some of my best friends I met here. Some of the greatest people that had some of the greatest impacts on my life I met here. Some of the greatest opportunities that I've had in my life, they happened here at Ignatius. From the bottom of my heart, I cannot express to you how grateful I am for the investment that you made in me by being my benefactors. And I want you to know that this place um, changed my life. I would say to them, thank you for taking an unknown and giving him an opportunity to be known. And I would say, bless you. We're back. It looks like we're playing the college overtime rules. It looks like Loyola won, which means they are starting on the 10-yard line. How do you feel about that? Definitely an interesting call. I've never, I haven't been to a, personally, never been to an overtime game. I so I don't know how it works. Same. I have never been to an overtime game before. I was thinking it was going to play like the NFL. The first play is a pass play outside. Oh. And it's an incomplete pass, it looks like. That is a complete pass for Loyola. That is a touchdown. No, now it's taking the extra pass to the chance to go back. That is a score for Loyola in overtime. That puts it to score to 14 to 20. 14 to 20, yeah. Which means, depending on how the Ramblers score, if they go for two or if they go for one, we'll back out the match. Well, 
looks like Loyola is going to kick it, go for the safe extra point, not have to worry about it later on. And the kick is good. Alright, this means Ignatius' ball. I believe it's on the same 10 yard line instead of the other 10 yard line. 25 now. Oh, uh, Ignatius needs to put in. So it started on the 10 yard line. They can do it. So this is a slight deviation from college football's overtime rules with us being on the 10 yard line instead of the 25 yard line. All right, Wolfpack's first play of overtime. They have to score on these next drives. They go for a run play to number nine. It is stuffed at the line. This game is incredibly close. Pulling up second down, looks like 11 or 12. It means the Wolfpack have to score on in the next three plays or else they lose this game to Loyola. This is a very important game. It's the Jesuit Cup after all. Wolfpack line up on second down on their on the 12 yard line it looks like. Pitch play to number nine, tackled for a loss. It's going up third down on the 15 yard line it looks like. How are you feeling so far about this? I am incredibly stressed. <laughs> I thought college applications were stressful. Or the JRP was stressful. Nah. This there, it is says stressful. nothing on this. This is an incredibly stressful game. It is so close. The Wolfpack have to score in the next two plays, or else it's game over. And Ignatius has definitely put in a ton of work for this game. Incredible. An incredible amount. The pass play, it's incomplete. This brings up fourth down. And the Wolfpack have to go for it. On fourth down. Means this is score or die. This is sudden death right now. It is sudden death right now, yeah. It's the last play of the game. They're either going to score and continue in overtime, or they're going to miss, and it's going to be game over. I, you know, you got to believe in the team. I mean, I believe they can do it. I don't believe they can do it. Um, they have so much room on the right side of the field right now. That's definitely, which right seems side. to be what they've done. They've stacked that right side with wide receivers. Let's see if they can convert. It is a pass play. He's looking right. Oh, they're moving, they're moving. It is incomplete. That is the game. There are no flags on the field. You know, Ignatius, I think they put in their best effort. Uh, Is there a flag on the play? The referees seem... They seem to be talking. They definitely just gave a penalty call facing Loyola bench. It seems to be that there's a penalty on Loyola. And the game cannot end on a defensive penalty. Which means that there's one more play for the Wolfpack. You know, one last shot for them. One shot, one opportunity. See if they can seize whatever Isn't they that wanted. A song? It's a song from Eminem. Let's see if they can do it. Let's see if they can leave. We'll pack on what looks like the 10 yard line. We'll pack on three. Let's see if the Wolf Pack can convert on this. They go for an outside pitch play, which is blocked by the Ramblers. Oh. And now it's a scramble. And it's no good. The Wolfpack were splattering the ball. Uh, that's the game. You know, Ignatius. That is the game. Let's go! The Ramblers won in a very close overtime. Good season! 21 to 14. Come on, baby! Uh, Ignatius put in, I think, their best effort. 
But I mean, in the end, I mean, if you think about it, Loyola has 94 players. Yeah, Loyola definitely had a big advantage player-wise. I mean, we did have home course in. advantage, but they do have... Yeah, they definitely did. We definitely did have home field advantage. Fortunately, we could not capitalize on that. No matter how close it was, uh, I think the Wolf Pack played an amazing game, <laughs> which definitely shows that we've improved as, as a team over the last 15 years I mean, that we've had a program. I thought it, I, I don't know, based on my opinion, that call that the ref made on the... On the one yard line yeah. that it wasn't a safety? Yeah. That's definitely a questionable call. We'll that have was to see. for sure a questionable call. I definitely think this shows that uh, the Wolf Pack have improved immensely over the last 15 years, and it looks like uh, that we are competing against state champions, consistent state champions in the in the Ramblers. Uh, this is a very good sign for our program in general. Well, that was um, you know exciting. I definitely had fun watching. So did I. That's a that was a good game, and uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm thank Zach you. Franklin. I'm Elizabeth Scully. And thank you for watching. So, hey, did you watch the game last night? No, I yeah. missed it. Great game. Good game. Show off.